Buenos dias. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this lecture from very early morning uh, in Chile. So uh, my name is Kenji Doya from Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, I very much appreciate Nicola and other organizers for this wonderful opportunity to talk to uh, the robotics uh, students uh, in South America. Okay, so let me uh, share my uh, screen. Right, so uh, the title of my uh, talk uh, is uh, How to Let Robots Learn, Develop, Communicate, and Evolve. It's clearly an overreaching uh, topic, but I hope uh, I can give you some uh, uh, pointers for your further study uh, in this uh, lecture. But uh, first of all, uh, do you know uh, where is uh, Okinawa? So this is the opposite side of the Pacific Ocean. And here, uh, it's uh, in the like, southwest end uh, of uh, Japan, uh, like a 2.5 hour flight from Tokyo. But uh, it is uh, uh, close from uh, other to to areas uh, in uh, East Asia. So uh, we'd like to hope uh, people, uh, not only tourists, but the science and the students uh, can get together uh, here for international and uh, inter-Egyptian research. And uh, uh, our lab uh, is called the Neural Computation Unit. Uh, so because it was one of the first uh, lab to be started in the OIST, so we tried to make uh, it uh, uh, quite uh, interdisciplinary on its own. So we have uh, as a part of the uh, lab working on creating autonomous uh, agents uh, another part of the lab uh, working on understanding the brain's mechanism uh, for uh, learning and doing some uh, robotics uh, experiments uh, and also uh, a neurobiology experiments uh, using uh, rats and mice. So uh, uh, the topic today uh, is uh, related to uh, something we wrote in our recent uh, uh, like a perspective paper in uh, current opinion in the behavioral sciences. So the main uh, theme uh, of this article is that in trying to create like a, a general actual intelligence agent, rather than uh, trying to hand code uh, intelligence, we should focus on the evolutionary and the developmental mechanism for the agents to gain intelligence. So, and then today, uh, in addition to the uh, uh, development of evolution, I, I will try to talk both uh, also about learning and development and communication and uh, evolution. These are different topics. So let's just start from uh, learning. So I have been mostly working on the reinforcement learning paradigm uh, for uh, robots and also uh, uh, in our brain. So uh, uh, this is a, a small robot, which I created many, many years ago as my undergraduate uh, uh, thesis project. So this was at the time when the so-called personal computers became available to undergraduate students. So I tried to do something uh, interesting. And then I want to build a robot that can learn on, on its own. Uh, but uh, at that time, there was no uh, information about how to let robots learn. So I, I kind of uh, thought by myself, what is necessary? So maybe it is, there should be some kind of exploration uh, and the feedback about the performance. So this robot learns to uh, work, but uh, uh, it uses a kind of a rotary encoder to monitor uh, in which direction how much speed the robot is moving. So uh, I used a very simple hill climb algorithm to let the robots find a variety of behaviors as you see in this uh, uh, movie. So at that time, I didn't know uh, about the uh, theory of reinforcement learning. Uh, this was about the same time when the Bato, Sutton and colleagues uh, developed a modern theory of a reinforcement learning. So the important feature of their proposal 
uh, is that uh, uh, in addition to uh, the uh, controller, they uh, train the critic, which uh, uh, evaluates the goodness of the current situation and use a prediction error to train the controller. So that is the uh, beginning of the so-called temporal difference line. So uh, which we may have, you would probably have learned already in this course. So we have uh, applied this kind of idea, for example, for a robot that learns to stand up. So uh, in this robot, the reward is given by the height of the head from the floor. And when it falls down, uh, we give some negative uh, reward or punishment. And then after many hundreds of uh, one person falls, this robot could learn this kind of uh, uh, behavior to stand up on its own. And the uh, important uh, feature uh, of uh, uh, this behavior uh, is that uh, initially the robot keeps the head on the ground, meaning that the uh, reward is zero. But by uh, pushing uh, its uh, weight on top of the floor, uh, on to top of the foot, uh, it can uh, uh, stand up uh, uh, subsequently. So it's a kind of a delayed reward uh, task, but uh, our reinforcement learning paradigm using TD uh, learning could successfully solve this delayed reward uh, problem. So, uh, and the, uh, one of the uh, earliest success uh, of uh, reinforcement learning is the uh, uh, so-called TD Yamon by Jerry Tezawa. But since then, uh, uh, for a long time, the uh, research in reinforcement learning uh, was uh, uh, quite uh, 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 quite gradual. So uh, uh, one uh, reason was that uh, the Boyan and Moore pointed out that uh, difficulty in combining a temporal difference learning with a multi-layer neural networks, which has a quite good uh, generalization capability. The reason is that uh, when you use this kind of temporal difference error, so uh, you uh, learn the previous uh, value by learning, but that can have a kind of side effect to uh, uh, change the target uh, value of the uh, next uh, state value function. And in the worst case, uh, this uh, generalization can cause some kind of a, uh, like a bubble-like effect so that the uh, future target is affected by your uh, learning, uh, causing some kind of a, uh, an instability of learning. So, but a uh, big breakthrough came in uh, 2015 when the deep mind people found out the uh, way to uh, uh, combine the deep learning uh, and the reinforcement learning uh, in the deep Q network framework. So in this framework, uh, uh, they show the computer screen uh, as the input and uh, let the uh, deep network learn action value function uh, corresponding to the screen. The trick there was uh, to use the uh, experience replay uh, so that uh, uh, temporal correlation uh, in the data set uh, was uh, 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 the effect of the uh, temporal correlation was minimized. Uh, and also uh, the, they used the two copies of the network uh, to fix the uh, future value of the, uh, uh, the temporal difference error uh, for a certain while and only intermittently update the target networks. With this uh, uh, method, the, now uh, we can uh, uh, safely combine temporal reference learning with deep, le deep neural networks. And that kind of a, a method uh, turned into uh, like a breakthrough, like uh, AlphaGo, which bet uh, human champions. And recently, uh, almost any uh, two-person game or even uh, multiple player games. So uh, this uh, deep neural network uh, takes a, a kind of model-free uh, framework, so which takes uh, no prior knowledge and uh, learn just from the uh, state action reward sequence using a state of action value functions. So this is a very simple uh, uh, algorithm, but learning can take uh, a lot of uh, uh, trials. So another strategy is a model-based in which the agents uh, learn internal model world 
like a state transition function uh, and also reward function. So uh, in that case, uh, you can use a uh, simulation uh, to uh, uh, speed up learning. So uh, uh, that can, uh, uh, such an internal model is helpful for uh, identifying uh, the current state from the, uh, uh, even in the noisy observation, uh, and also you can use it for action planning. So it allows a flexible adaptation, but the computational uh, load is very high. So the how to combine model-free and model-based uh, frameworks is a very interesting uh, uh, topic. So the one of the early uh, proposal uh, of a model-based framework uh, uh, was by this Sutton uh, called the Dyna Architecture. And uh, this is uh, uh, the work by my former uh, PhD student, uh, Paul Parmas, so using a uh, model-based uh, reinforcement learning framework called PUCO. So this is the task of, uh, uh, for this smartphone robot to uh, bounce up and balance. So initially this robot uh, makes almost random movement. While doing that, this robot takes uh, data and build a model of how the body uh, responds to the wheel movement using a Gaussian process. And they use such a model to uh, train the controller. And then uh, in just less than 10 trials, that this uh, robot uh, could learn to uh, bounce up and balance. This is one uh, demonstration of the data efficiency of a uh, model-based strategy. So uh, uh, he further uh, went on to drive uh, more advanced methods for a model-based uh, control strategy. I don't have time, but you may want to uh, check these uh, uh, works. And uh, uh, in addition to applying uh, uh, the reinforcement learning to robots, we are interested in uh, uh, the mechanism of reinforcement learning in the brain. So uh, uh, in reinforcement learning, uh, uh, the agents learn uh, uh, like a value function and they use them for, for example, action selection uh, and uh, learning based on the temporal difference. So, uh, and how to implement these steps, like prediction and action selection and learning uh, is a very important uh, issue. Uh, for example, what kind of uh, functional approximator we can use or whether to, to use uh, uh, prediction models for the value computation. And also important topic is how to tune the parameters for example, temporal discounting parameter or temperature or inverse temperature for exploration and for learning rate. And these are important topic for uh, the uh, in, uh, implementation of reinforcement learning to robots, but probably these are important uh, issue for our brain uh, as well. So uh, uh, regarding the implementation of reinforcement learning uh, in the brain, uh, many people, including ourselves, uh, uh, suggest that uh, the basal ganglia, which is hidden under the cerebral cortex, would play a very important role. The, the main reason uh, is that the dopamine, which is known to uh, uh, show something like a, a TD error, like a, a behavior, project very strongly to the input site of the uh, basal ganglia called the striata. So this is a more kind of engineering uh, view of uh, this uh, circuit. So uh, uh, the dopamine neurons uh, project heavily to the synapse connecting to the cortex to the uh, input site of the basal ganglia called striata. And uh, this synapse is known to have a dopamine dependent synaptic plasticity. And uh, that suggests that these neurons may be involved in uh, learning something like a state value function or action value function. And then the, uh, these values would be used for TDA computation and also for action selection with some kind of a competitive uh, 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 mechanisms. So uh, we uh, try to uh, test uh, such a hypothesis uh, using uh, uh, rats that plays a uh, like a two-armed bandit task, depending on the tone he hears, he can choose the left, either right or left hole, and then uh, get some kind of probabilistic reward feedback. 
And we fitted this animal behavior using a Q learning model uh, and then estimated the, how the action value, for example, the, for the left uh, whole choice changed over like hundreds of trials. And they use this kind of a, uh, uh, time course to uh, uh, look for uh, any neuron activity related to the uh, action value. So this is one example uh, of the neuron whose activity changes. For the animal, he has a Q-tone like this, which has a very high correlation with the left action values. And with this array, we could identify the neurons in the uh, stratum uh, encoding uh, uh, the action value or state uh, value function in addition to the uh, movements for the left Q or right Q. And more recently, uh, we uh, started to do like a neuron type specific uh, uh, recording using an uh, uh, endoscope with, with a calcium imaging. So these are the neurons that project to uh, the dopamine neurons uh, in the uh, uh, substantial nigra. And uh, my former uh, graduate student, uh, Tomohiko Isawa, could demonstrate that these uh, neurons uh, actually show reward predictive properties which is consistent with the hypothesis that, that these neurons would uh, represent the state value function. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of a, uh, things uh, uh, we have been working on regarding the uh, uh, reinforcement learning uh, in the robots uh, and uh, in the brain. And then the uh, development is also very important. So uh, uh, as we uh, uh, get more and more uh, experience, we acquire new behaviors and then uh, our performance uh, becomes uh, uh, more uh, uh, sophisticated uh, and also uh, important uh, feature of uh, humans, animals, that as we gain experience, we can adapt to the new uh, situation in a more uh, flexible way, which is called uh, meta-learning or transfer learning. So uh, uh, this is the uh, very early, uh, our early study of, of reinforcement learning uh, in uh, collaboration with uh, Professor Okite Hikosaka, who is now at the NIH. So this is a computer game for a, a monkey. So he learns to uh, uh, press the buttons in the right sequence by trial and error. So, uh, and, but uh, uh, as he uh, learns the same uh, sequence uh, over many uh, weeks, the, the movement got much, much faster. And then we could see that, that their performance is more predictive rather than just chasing the uh, target that were presented. So there might be some kind of a, uh, different strategies for uh, or mechanism for uh, learning new sequence uh, and uh, well-learned sequence. And indeed, they perform the, uh, the blockade of the uh, different parts of the and ganglia and showed that certain part uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, new learning and certain part of the ganglia is uh, uh, important for performance of very well-learned uh, uh, sequence. And actually, so the basal ganglia and the cortex has uh, some kind of parallel loop structure. And it seems that the different parts uh, use a different uh, state uh, representation. For example, the uh, like a prefrontal cortex would may, you may use a more abstract representation, whereas the like, motor cortex use more uh, direct uh, uh, like motor representation. So they may be used for uh, like uh, uh, initial learning or more smooth uh, 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 performance. And the, uh, such a uh, uh, representation uh, using uh, uh, multiple modality may be used for some kind of hierarchical processing. Uh, indeed, uh, the uh, learning to stand up, which I showed uh, in, uh, previously, 
uh, use the like hierarchical representation. The lower level for like uh, sensory motor control in the continuous uh, uh, torque and angle and angular velocity, and the higher level uh, uses uh, uh, like a more discrete uh, representation to facilitate uh, coarse grain uh, uh, exploration. So by successfully combining these uh, 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 hierarchical uh, reinforcement learners, we could avoid relatively uh, fast learning uh, of uh, uh, such a behavior. And uh, uh, when you, we uh, implement uh, the learning architecture, we have a choice of using a simple agent or more complex sophisticated agent. Simple agent may learn very quickly, but their performance is limited. So uh, the, the complex agent may be able to uh, perform better, but it may need more data for uh, training. So the one idea my former colleague, Eiji Uchibe, proposed is that let them learn simultaneously with a proper uh, weighting by uh, uh, important sampling. So then the initially, the, like a simple agent was take uh, the uh, control, uh, but gradually the, why, uh, the simple agent are taking control, sophisticated agent can learn uh, the better performance. So that was uh, what uh, uh, the architecture uh, the CLIS could uh, achieve. So uh, such a, a parallel modular learning uh, may also be, uh, be quite important. Uh, that may be uh, behind the, uh, the development uh, of our own behaviors as well. And also uh, uh, my uh, colleague, uh, former colleague Makoto, uh, uh, first analyzed this rat behavior using ray force learning model but he explored whether there's any other uh, argument to better explain the animal behavior. And he came up with a kind of a uh, finite state uh, transition model uh, to explain the animal's choice behavior. And indeed, the, he showed this kind of eight state uh, transition uh, model. Uh, each state corresponds to a different uh, choice and also the animal uh, trans between different states based on the uh, reward feedback. And actually, uh, by comparing the uh, performance of uh, different uh, uh, models, uh, he showed that this uh, finite state model has a better performance in uh, reproducing animal behavior than the reinforcing learning models. So uh, uh, the possibility is that even though the initially uh, the uh, animal learns the, uh, this kind of behavior by reinforced learning, so uh, some kind of a strategy for adapting to new uh, reward setup can be learned as a kind of a uh, like fi fixed uh, like a uh, routine strategy. So uh, uh, then the, if uh, there are many uh, different modules and strategies in the brain, how to select the right one uh, given the uh, former experience is a, a very important topic. So uh, there has been uh, many uh, hypotheses about how the mod right models are selected based on the prediction error or uncertainty. And uh, also, uh, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, in our brain, how appropriate choice of the uh, modules are implemented. So for example, uh, the Zhao Jin Wang and the colleagues uh, proposed that the different uh, interneurons, inhibitory interneurons in the cortex will be used for the gating of the input to the uh, uh, pyramidal neurons or gating the output from the pyramidal neurons. I think this is a very interesting uh, uh, suggestion. Okay. And uh, in terms of the meta-learning, so one type of meta-learning is that uh, setting of the uh, hyperparameter or meta-parameters. For example, uh, in the uh, reinforcement learning, uh, like the learning rate, uh, inverse temperature, and the temporal dis discounting are the major parameters. And then I proposed uh, uh, 
uh, hypothesis that they may be uh, controlled by specific uh, neuromodulators, which project from the brainstem to, to very widely uh, to the different parts of the brain. So since then, we have been focusing on the function of the serotonin system. And uh, recently, uh, using a method uh, called optogenetics, we can uh, stimulate or suppress the activities of the certain type of neurons. So this is the, a mouse uh, in which we can stimulate the serotonin neurons by shining a blue light. So, uh, and uh, he waits for the reward uh, after three seconds, six seconds, nine seconds, or infinity. So uh, for a longer waiting, like nine seconds, they make uh, waiting errors, but by shining blue light uh, to stimulate serotonin, we can significantly uh, reduce such a uh, waiting error. And further, for this infinity waiting, so usually the mouse waits like about 10 seconds, but by simulating a certain you, they can wait much longer. So uh, it shows that uh, uh, simulation of serotonin uh, makes animal more patient for the delayed reward, which is consistent with a uh, uh, hypothesis. And uh, there are other uh, uh, work in the transfer learning and uh, uh, meta-learning. So uh, it is a very common practice to uh, reuse the uh, hidden layer of the deep neural network and only learn the top layers for transfer learning. So this is a uh, uh, work by Matt Botovnik and his colleagues. Uh, uh, the, they train a recurrent neural network with uh, uh, observation and action and the previous reward as input to uh, uh, generate a new action and the estimate the value function. And uh, uh, initially, this is uh, uh, just like a uh, regular reinforcement learning, but they found that after extensive learning, even if they fix the synaptic plasticity, this uh, uh, network can still adapt to the change uh, in the environment. So uh, the trick is that this uh, uh, hidden variables in the recurrent neural network can uh, grasp the important latent uh, variable in the task. For example, in uh, 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 like a two-armed bandit task, the probability of reward for the left choice and the probability reward for the right choice uh, is the key latent variable for the uh, animal's choice. And they show that such uh, uh, key variables are represented in the uh, hidden layer. And they also showed that uh, something similar to like a model-based uh, uh, action selection can also be learned in this kind of a uh, uh, recurrent neural network. So uh, this is also an interesting uh, uh, suggestion uh, that uh, after uh, extensive learning, even without synaptic plasticity, the network can uh, uh, switch into the mode uh, for a different uh, uh, state uh, or condition uh, of the task. Okay, so uh, let me shift on to the topic of our communication. So uh, the, uh, we humans uh, do not live alone. We collaborate uh, with the other humans uh, to uh, do our intelligent behaviors and also learn uh, uh, our intelligent behaviors. So uh, then the uh, language uh, takes a very important role in that uh, process. So uh, uh, to let the uh, robots and the agents learn language, uh, the language games are often used. Uh, and uh, also in the actual use of a uh, language, uh, the mechanism of mental simulation is very important. Uh, for example, the Luke Steels and uh, his colleagues uh, did uh, this kind of a talking heads uh, uh, experiment to uh, uh, let the two agents to uh, uh, agree on the vocabulary to uh, represent the, uh, uh, the color, shape, or location. So uh, more recently, uh, his uh, uh, the colleague, uh, the Michael Spranger, used a more uh, like a, uh, embodied robotic setup 
to show the different naming games for colors or uh, spatial uh, uh, relationships. Uh, in these language games, uh, the successful communication itself uh, was the target of learning. But uh, uh, we were interested in the uh, when uh, and how and the further uh, agent uh, learn to communicate in a simple reinforcement learning agents. So this is uh, uh, the work by my former colleague uh, Takashi Sato. So he took a very simple, uh, like a, a two agent uh, with a lighting communication and uh, demonstrated this very simple uh, uh, reinforcement learning agent with a recurrent uh, neural network can learn to use uh, signaling for cooperative behaviors. And this is another work by my former uh, uh, student, so uh, Michael Klein, uh, who uh, showed uh, that uh, uh, the model-based agent can also learn to uh, uh, use uh, the communication to achieve its goal uh, of uh, uh, having uh, uh, appropriate nutrient for the, the survivor. And uh, more recently, the, uh, it has been shown that the, uh, by reinforcement learning, the agent can learn the compositional uh, uh, language. So uh, uh, in this case, uh, the, the, they use the uh, deep neural networks uh, and also uh, uh, in, uh, introduce something as sparse prior for the vocabulary and the extensive used back propagation uh, through the world model across multiple brains. And then, uh, which is not the biologically realistic, uh, but still uh, they could uh, uh, demonstrate that agents can learn to uh, acquire uh, like a uh, compositional language, like action and object and subject. So, uh, I think that's also very interesting uh, uh, new developments. Uh, and the, uh, when we use a language uh, uh, for very simple uh, words like uh, uh, watch out or uh, the, uh, the take care, so we can uh, simply react to the word, but we usually imagine the situation uh, the speaker is in from the language and then uh, produce a correct behavior. So which requires some kind of mental simulation, which uh, is a, like a process based on the action dependent state transition model. So such a mental simulation is uh, uh, helpful, for example, estimating the current state from the past state and action, or uh, planning the future, or uh, imagining a virtual uh, situation, which will be probably very important for lang language communication. So uh, uh, regarding the uh, implementation of uh, action planning, so uh, uh, one uh, uh, framework which uh, we uh, uh, proposed is that the different uh, uh, parts of the brain are specialized for a different uh, uh, learning framework like Cerebrum for the for, uh, supervised learning, which can be used for uh, acquiring uh, action-dependent uh, state transition model. And the basal ganglia uh, for reinforcement learning, which can be used for evaluating the, uh, the predicted state. And the cortex uh, with its uh, unsupervised learning for the representation learning can be used for uh, kind of a uh, working memory site for uh, linking different uh, state and action uh, representation. So uh, uh, to test uh, uh, such a framework, uh, uh, my former student, uh, Alan Fermin, uh, performed a uh, functional MRI task using a, a simple computer game to plan for uh, a complex uh, uh, path uh, using a, a action dependent state transition model, which is a key map based cursor movement. 
and he indeed found the certain cortical areas uh, activated, like parietal cortex and premotor cortex and dorsal prefrontal cortex during this kind of task. Uh, after the target was shown, and before the subject actually started the finger movements. And, but in addition, he also found the activity in the part uh, of the uh, cerebellum uh, and also basal ganglia, so, uh, which is, uh, is consistent with a uh, prediction uh, that the uh, internal model in the cerebellum and also evaluation mechanism of the basal ganglia would be utilized for action planning. And we are further interested in what is happening uh, in this kind of cortical circuit. Uh, to do that, uh, we use the mice uh, that uh, are running under, uh, on this air floated ball under the so-called two-photon microscope scope, uh, uh, with which we can uh, measure the activities of hundreds of neurons uh, in the cerebral cortex. And then uh, by uh, using a Bayesian decoding of these neural activities, we can see that uh, uh, goal distance representation of the uh, mouse's brain changes as the mouse actually moves, even when the sound feedback for the uh, target location is uh, withheld. So, uh, and uh, this is a kind of indication uh, that the uh, neural uh, uh, process uh, for the uh, mental simulation uh, is existent in the parietal cortex. We are hoping to uh, further study uh, this kind of new activities to understand the uh, cellular uh, level mechanism of mental simulation. Okay, so uh, let us finally move on to topics uh, of uh, evolution, right? So our mechanism of learning or development uh, or uh, the communication uh, was uh, acquired through the long history uh, of the uh, evolution of uh, our brain. And uh, also uh, for uh, robots, the uh, application of an evolutionary framework uh, is uh, quite common. So uh, uh, you can uh, uh, think of uh, evolution of learning algorithms, of learning architecture as well. So we have been uh, working on the project called the Cyber Rodent uh, Project. Uh, our uh, question was whether the uh, reinforcement learning robots can acquire uh, its own reward function. So, uh, uh, so to do that, uh, we uh, try to build uh, like robots with uh, uh, the, the constraints similar to biological agents. So uh, uh, our reward uh, system uh, have uh, like a, a food or water or uh, sex or uh, in a human like a money or social fame, but uh, maybe a little to two major uh, uh, necessity of life, which is uh, like a, a self-preservation or survival uh, and uh, self-reproduction. Uh, so uh, uh, for mimicking that, we create a robot which look for a battery pack on the floor uh, and charging for survival, and they use uh, kind of infrared communication uh, to exchange their program or the parameters of the common programs. So uh, we have been uh, working on the both simulation and the experiments uh, using this kind of a robotic platform. Uh, and then the, in this uh, framework, each hardware robots have a multiple uh, virtual agents, each of which have uh, uh, genes representing the like, innate behavior, uh, uh, neural network rates, uh, and also the uh, parameters for the reward function and the parameters for reinforcement learning. So um, then uh, uh, my former student uh, uh, and the, uh, the postdoc, Stefan, uh, could uh, uh, show that these robots uh, can uh, uh, evolve the different uh, uh, reward function. For example, this is a reward for the sight of the battery pack, and this is a visual reward for the sight of the face of the robot for mating. So uh, he could demonstrate that uh, uh, 
parameters of reinforcement learning, uh, like temperature or learning rate or temporal discounting parameter can also be uh, optimized through evolution. Right. And then the unexpectedly, we uh, found, found that in some colony, so there are heterogeneity of the behaviors. So uh, this is the, what the robot does when he finds, finds the a battery pack on one side and another robot on the other side. So some robots just go for the foraging for uh, the energy uh, recharge, but some other robots uh, went for uh, kept track of another robot for mating uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, he ran the gene analysis of the, uh, those robots and actually found out there are like two different clusters and uh, he could show that they uh, can survive, uh, stably co coexist with a certain uh, proportion. So uh, this is the unexpected finding, but uh, by combination uh, of the uh, evolution uh, and reinforcement learning, we can see uh, the like a quite uh, a different variety of the behaviors. So uh, unfortunately, these uh, robots uh, became too old, but now we are building a new generation of robots using smartphone as their brain. Uh, so uh, like a survival to go to the uh, charging station or reproduction by showing a genetic code by uh, like a QR code. So this is our ongoing uh, development. Okay, so uh, uh, in our experiments, uh, the, we fix the basic learning framework and uh, optimize the reward function and the metaparameters for uh, learning. Uh, but we can also think of uh, the uh, evolution of the learning architecture itself. So this is uh, a uh, very uh, old work uh, by uh, Yael Niff uh, when he was uh, uh, studying with Aitan Rapin. So uh, C uh, demonstrate that uh, uh, using uh, a genetic algorithm, so uh, uh, they can, she, she can uh, uh, that, uh, let the uh, network to choose the appropriate uh, uh, synaptic plasticity rule, like uh, depending on the input or output or product of the input and the output. Right. So, uh, and then the, uh, she could demonstrate that uh, uh, something uh, similar to uh, like uh, uh, the plastic rule we use for uh, like reinforced learning can be uh, acquired through uh, ev evolution. So, uh, and uh, this uh, way, so uh, by combining uh, the, uh, the evolutionary uh, algorithms uh, with the reinforced learning, or even uh, uh, by letting the evolutionary algorithm to find out the appropriate learning algorithm and the uh, architecture, we can let the robots have a high degrees of uh, autonomy. But uh, as, uh, some people uh, would ask that isn't it dangerous to let the robots uh, have such kind of autonomy? And the, uh, if you can uh, let the agent find some goals and the methods to uh, the, uh, achieve it, it can uh, be helpful for creating uh, uh, novel technology or scientific, discover scientific uh, 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 theory or creating a new culture or industry. But we have to be, be careful about their uh, possible dangers like overruns or side effects uh, and especially the exploitation by the individuals or groups with some kind of ambition of a hatred like a terrorism. So uh, in uh, avoiding or assessing those uh, danger, maybe we should learn from our human societies because uh, humans are the most dangerous species on this planet. So uh, we have uh, brought uh, many species to extinctions and uh, ourselves uh, uh, came to almost near extinction by the major wars. And, but uh, this human society have uh, evolved uh, the mechanism to 
avoid such catastrophes. Uh, for example, democracy uh, is a way uh, to uh, uh, avoid the danger by uh, never giving unlimited power to a pattern, certain person or small groups. Uh, in the politics, uh, election or term limit for important position, uh, sovereign power has been uh, developed. Uh, even in the economy, we have anti-monopoly law, a right to strike and information disclosure. So uh, uh, these are the, uh, uh, the mechanism to uh, uh, avoid the uh, dangers, uh, which we, by learning from a lot of uh, the disasters in the history. So uh, probably uh, in the future society, the, there will be many AI agents communicating with each other. So in such a uh, society of uh, artificial agents, maybe peer reviewing uh, of the, uh, the algorithms uh, using uh, open source structure might be a very important. Okay, so with this, uh, uh, let me conclude my talk and then uh, uh, thank for uh, many colleagues who contributed this kind of work. Uh, and also, uh, let me uh, just add to that, uh, the workshop uh, we are holding the next month. Uh, it was supposed to be in Tokyo, but now it is held online, uh, uh, sponsored by uh, our project on uh, AI and brain science. And also we are holding uh, the Japanese uh, Neuroscience, Neurochemistry, Neural Network Society Conference in Okinawa uh, after two years. Hopefully at this time we uh, can freely travel across the world and I hope many of you can come across the Pacific to Okinawa. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.